When I chose my war cabinet, I took great care to surround myself with old rivals. I may have overdone it. <laughs> right on, Halifax. The approach you propose is it's, it's, it's not only, it's futile. But it involves us in a deadly danger. The deadly danger here is this romantic fantasy of fighting to the end. What is the end? if not the destruction of all things. There's nothing heroic in going down fighting if it can be avoided. Nothing even remotely patriotic in death or glory if the odds are firmly on the former. Nothing inglorious in trying to shorten a war that we are clearly losing. Losing! Europe is still... Europe is lost. And before our forces are wiped out completely, now is the time to negotiate in order to obtain the best conditions possible. Hitler will not insist on outrageous terms. He will know his own weaknesses. He will be reasonable. When will the lesson be learned? When will the lesson be learned? How many more dictators must be wooed? Appeased, good God, given him mixed privileges, before we learn. You cannot reason with a tiger when your head is in its mouth. Prime Minister. Action. Yes. What goes on down here? That's need to know, and you don't. A war cabinet has been formed of five members. Darkest Hour is a movie about the first month of Winston Churchill's time as Prime Minister in 1940. We are in the preliminary stage of one of the greatest battles in history. It is only five weeks of Churchill's life. Five very, very significant, crucial weeks in our history, in our civilization. First, we must rouse our old friends to an heroic resistance. Winston had written three of the greatest speeches ever written within a four-week period of each other. So that begged the question, what was the context that motivated this outpouring of brilliance? Conquer, we must. As conquer, we shall. Well done, sir. The opportunity to work with Gary was also a big draw. I'm uh, uh, telephoning about your... Uh, Navy ships. There are those jobs where you just get that excitement back that you remember why you wanted to do it in the first place. You've wanted this your entire adult life. No, since the nursery. Gary is a great collaborator and it was interesting for both of us to discover who Winston really was and try and bring that to an audience. You might even rise up and, and, and tear me down when I for one moment to contemplate parley or surrender. Most of the characters who appear in the film actually existed in real life. Clemmy was an extraordinary woman. She had very strong ideas about politics and about um, what should be done in the world and how things should be run. If the king does ask you to become prime minister, we don't know that for sure. I don't want you to be disliked. <laughs> More than I already am. Kristen and I had a really good chemistry. I think we really hit it off. Who should show up? Pig. I think her Clementine is the best I've ever seen. I think you were nervous, and he has a knack for drawing out the very worst and those who are trying to help him the most. No, no, it's not, it's not him, it's me. Elizabeth Layton, his secretary, a lot of the story is told through her point of view. Yeah, I think in a way she's meant to be the eyes of the audience, the kind of fresh eyes and kind of the everyman. Yes, sir, let's try keep it. I'm not allowed in the map room. Well, you are now. Lily is really impressive. She brings forensic study of detail and dedication. Okay, check that. Check that, thank you. She types on an old-fashioned, clunky typewriter like she's a pro. There is only one man the opposition will accept. Why have I been forced to send for Churchill? It was floated by me to play Winston Churchill, and my initial reaction was, I laughed my leg off. <laughs> If someone had said, we want you to play Stan Laurel or even have a crack at Hitler, you know, I think I could probably, I think I could give it, give it a go, you know. You have an enormous task ahead of you. I only hope it's not too late. 
it wasn't the psychological or the intellectual challenge. It was just the physical. Gary is a shapeshifter, and certainly what was required for this movie was a, a transformative performance. <clears throat> it, it will inspire them. We both felt that we wanted to get behind the icon of Winston um, and, and find the man. So I went to sort of books and documentary footage and started to sort of build him from the first brick up. I speak to you for the first time as Prime Minister. Churchill's voice, it's a voice we're very familiar with. You're familiar with it in, the, in that old recording kind of a way, but nonetheless, you are. Conquer, we must. As conquer, we shall. I had to convince myself that I could do it. And then I took one of the speeches and I started to, almost like a sort of teaser trailer, I started to experiment. I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears and sweat. Gary would send me recordings of himself doing those speeches and it was very weird because it was... It was like listening to Churchill. I mean, there he was. What is our aim? I can answer in one word. Victory. Gary is an actor that just transforms in every role. He's to the point where he's unrecognisable. Come on, telegram. There are things that are very specific and iconic. The cigar, the watch chain, the ring, the spectacles, the hats. Look, this is the closest I'll ever get to being in a room with Churchill, and it's pretty good. Churchill is someone who we have a very clear, um, almost caricature idea of in our minds. He was a very, very brilliant man with a lot of much, uh, of quite complicated things going on inside him. Cicero! He was sort of naughty and cherubic, a twinkle in his eye. Oh, you beast! <laughs> um, <laughs> I had such fun finding the man. Was I comprehensible? Gary doesn't look like Winston Churchill at all, and the proportion is totally different. It took a lot of time finding the right look that at the same time didn't hide Gary too much, you know. Um, we had to be able to see the performance. Obviously. 